Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI, and this is a 58-year-old gentleman who went to his doctor with complaints of shoulder pain. He had washed his car a couple weeks earlier, and his shoulder had pain that didn't go away, and the physician thought he may have a rotator cuff tear and did an MRI to confirm that, and indeed the patient has a massive rotator cuff tear and severe AC arthropathy, this is the acromiocurricular joint, just severe arthritis, this is the supraspinatus muscle. It's infiltrated with bright fat, so fatty atrophy of the muscle, meaning that the tear is long-standing. The tendon ends about right here. It should end over here, so it's torn and retracted way, way, way back to here. Here's the torn end of the supraspinatus. When we go backwards, we get into the infraspinatus tendon here, and we don't see a normal tendon. We see just white, which means there's fluid, a fluid-filled gap. And this is the end of the infraspinatus tendon. It's torn from way over here and retracted way, 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 way back. So the entire infraspinatus, the entire supraspinatus tendons are torn. Again, a massive tear of the rotator cuff. And the humeral head is elevated, is drifted upwards, and it contacts the acromion process here. This is the acromion, humeral head, and you see a bone-on-bone -bone configuration. So the rotator cuff that's supposed to separate those and go underneath and attach over here is gone and is drifting upwards. This is a long-standing tear because we can see the fatty atrophy. And the patient also had a tear of the superior labrum here, tear of the inferior labrum here, a ruptured biceps tendon, so lots of pathology. But there was one other finding, and the, the main reason for this video is the marrow pattern. The marrow pattern didn't look right. Um, on this view, we see bright subcutaneous fat on a T1-weighted image. And normally, marrow will be uniformly bright, kind of like the fatty uh, fat in the subcutaneous fat, it'll be fatty marrow. But in this patient, we just see a little geographic area of normal fatty marrow, and the rest of the marrow throughout the humeral head, neck, shaft, is really uniform and low in signal rather than bright like fat. So it looks like an infiltrative uh, marrow process. Also, the acromion process is low in signal, it's replaced, the glenoid is replaced, the distal clavicle is replaced, so all these bones are abnormal. The only thing normal is this little geographic region here. So when we see this, uh, one thing we think about is um, marrow infiltration from leukemia or multiple myeloma. Leukemia would be the number one thing, and uh, talking to the physician, the patient did have a history of leukemia um, uh, almost uh, eight years ago, I guess, he had been treated, and now we see this diffuse bright signal here on this sequence this is a fat suppressed sequence subcutaneous fat is dark and the fat in the marrow here um, there is no fat so it, uh, it just looks bright the fat didn't get uh, suppressed except for in this one region here so um, thinking about what to call this so when we see a diffuse infiltrator process this widespread we think about marrow infiltrator processes leukemia would be the main thing multiple myeloma could cause this but um, it has much more varied appearance. Sometimes it's multifocal. Sometimes there's just one area. And it, you know, sometimes it can be diffuse like this, but leukemia is more of a classic appearance of just diffuse marrow infiltrator process. You can also get diffuse marrow infiltrator processes from hyperplastic anemias, patients who have sickle cell or spherocytosis or th thalassemias. They can also have a diffuse replacement like this where they have hyperactive red marrow, and it can look very, very similar. Also, you can get faked out sometimes in people who have uh, no you know, pathology, but just red marrow reconversion. People who, let's say, uh, athletes who um, train at high altitudes, they can have um, increased activity of their red marrow, and, the, and their fatty marrow will become replaced or reconversion back to red marrow, become metabolically active, and they can have a diffuse infiltrative marrow pattern like this. Smokers can have patchy marrow. Usually it's not quite this diffuse, uh, but you can have really bizarre uh, marrow appearances in smokers from red marrow reconversion. And even obese women sometimes can have red marrow reconversion, have unusual um, patterns of marrow. But in this case, uh, the patient had a leukemia, and the process is just so diffuse and so prominent. Um, that's one of the first things we would think about. And there is no um, definitive diagnosis of leukemia on MRI. They always have to do blood work and maybe a marrow um, 
biopsy as well to try to get to a definitive diagnosis. So all we can do is just suggest that it's abnormal, throw out the differential, and then they have to, again, uh, do clinical uh, examination and lab work to really get to a definitive diagnosis. And that's it. Thank you very much.